Hey guys, Corey with Famous Media, and I'm back. I know it's been a while, but today I'm bringing you a full review of the Nikon D610. So we're here in Midtown, New York. The festivities are screaming, it's beautiful. Everybody's running around with the holiday cheer, but that's not what this video is about. I figured it'd be great scenery though. However, today we're talking about the Nikon D610. Now, it just blows my mind that it's not even been a year since the D600 came out. Many people had oil and dust problems. I guess I was one of the lucky ones that did. <laughs> However, many people complained to Nikon to fix this problem, and guess what they did? Instead of fixing the problem, they just, manufacture another camera, like as if that's gonna be cheaper than fixing the problem. Well, in the end, this camera comes out at a great price. Uh, it's full frame, the low light's pretty good. Uh, overall, great camera, but really not much different than the D600. However, there's no problems with this camera, so that's great in itself, right? Now, this camera actually focuses and tracks quite a bit better than the D600. The focus points are collected in the center like the D600 were, and this also has 39 autofocus points. Of course, it's got the 24.3 megapixel CMOS full frame sensor. However, the big difference is the autofocus capabilities. That's where the big difference between this and the D600 is. So to the naked eye, the D610 looks pretty much identical to the D600. Of course, no problems with the dust and oil, which is a great thing. Who wants dust and oil on their photos anyway? Not me. Anyway, the D610 has a new Multicam 4800 uh, autofocusing system, which is much better than the 3500, and I have definitely seen a vast improvement over the autofocusing and tracking capabilities versus the D600. This has 39 autofocus points and will shoot up to six frames a second. But let's stop talking about features and stuff, and let's get on the streets and see the festivities of New York City, because I'm back in action today, and we're gonna show you what this thing can do. Let's go. So right now I got it on uh, continuous um, autofocusing and aperture priority. Let's take a walk to the streets. Of course, this has your microphone and your headphone jack, HDMI and audio video port, and of course the new remote connector. Of course, you can get the MBD14 battery grip, which I don't have for this right now. This camera handles nice, it feels really good. Uh, it's a little lighter um, than I'm used to shooting with the D800 battery grip or the D4, but it does feel well balanced. A very similar feel uh, to the Nikon D7100. We're gonna go uh, bug the Toy Story characters and uh, we got Mario over here. Let's go bug them for a second. Uh, Mickey and Minnie Mouse out here. It's really festive in New York City. A great place to be during Christmas time. You should guys check it out if you've never been here. At some point, take a vacation here. It's amazing. This camera handles very nicely. The autofocusing system is uh, much improved and it somewhat feels similar to a D7100, although a D7100 does focus just a little bit quicker. Now, I'm shooting an aperture priority, of course, with spot metering. You just go ahead and you turn this dial over uh, to A, and then you set your ISO by holding the ISO button down here and switch over the top knob to ISO auto, and you can set those in the menu um, right here, which are ISO sensitivity settings. And that's how you can shoot an aperture priority, and at nighttime, that is an absolute must. Let's take a walk and the festivities of Radio City here in New York City during Christmas time, and we'll see what we get. Such a 
great place during Christmas, I tell you. It's like, just you feel in the mood, even when it's not Christmas, it still has that Christmas feel all winter long. The autofocusing capabilities in this camera, like I've said a couple of times already, is really good. I'm actually surprised it tracks much better than the D600. So the autofocusing capabilities of the D610 are improved over the D600. Uh, not as good as the D800 uh, or the D4, but much improved over the D600 for sure. It is freezing out here, but we're here to bring you a review on this camera, so we're gonna go across the Radio City. The button configuration on the D610 is very similar uh, to the D7100, and of course identical to the D600. Nothing has changed here. Of course, right here on the top of the camera, uh, you've got your exposure compensation, your record button, your on and off and shutter button, and of course, your spot metering, and of course, the record button for video. So, two more features of the D610 that I love is bracketing. This will allow you to bracket up to five shots, I believe. I could be wrong, but I believe it's five shots. And it also offers time-lapse uh, photography in camera. What that means is that you can set an interval on there to say, take photos every five or 10 seconds, or even 20, 30 minutes. And you can set how many hours you want it to go for. It'll take the photos at the set intervals that you've commanded it to for however long you've set it for and save it to an internal 1080p movie to your memory card. And that is fantastic. I use that feature on the D4 and the D800 all the time. And the D610 has this feature, which is amazing. So you should check that out too as well and play with it. It is fantastic uh, to create all kinds of different movies that you can you know, shoot around the world. Anywhere that you're traveling to, it's a fantastic feature to have. Now, we're gonna take a look at the video and see the video quality. The D610 will do 720p and 1080p. It'll do them at 24, 25p, 30p, and 60p. Uh, I believe it even does 50p as well. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna take some uh, raw footage with the D610. for 1600 ISO. It's a phenomenal camera for the money. The quality is just as good as the D800 or the D4 for video. 
Um, I would expect that the D4 and D800 would perform better in low light, although the D610 looks like it's on par with the D800E. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features for the D610. Right here, you've got the diopter control for your viewfinder right above it. You've got the cover and protector that comes with the camera for the hot shoe mount. Moving along over here, we got the lock on the dial, which controls different shutter modes like continuous low, single, continuous high, mirror up, and quiet mode. They also have a quiet continuous, which is pretty cool. Next, we got the locking uh, wheel here for the different program modes like automatic, manual, aperture priority, and shutter priority. And on the left-hand side here, you can see your play and your trash button, of course, your zoom in, zoom out, your picture control, and your menu buttons on the left side. On the right side, you've got your D-pad, which has your OK button. Over here, you can change all different types of settings, and you can zoom in and out of your photos. And if you hold the ISO button at the bottom, you can turn your dial on the back side of the camera and change the ISO settings. Right here, you have your movie and picture control button, and you can go into live view, which will allow you to go into movie record mode. You got your rear uh, dial on the back, and of course, your info button as well to put your grid pattern on, and also to level your shot, and it also shows your audio bars on the left-hand side. Also, to protect yourself from accidentally bumping the D-pad, you can put it in the lock position to render it inactive. Above that, you've got the auto exposure lock and auto focusing button, which you can use like me in aperture priority to lock the auto exposure. You've got the rear dial to control the shutter button, and on the top, you can also turn the power button to the right to turn the backlight LED on. You've got the exposure compensation, which is good from negative to plus 5 EV, which is stunning. And you got your metering button here for spot metering, center weighted metering, and 3D color matrix metering, and of course, the record button to record video. Got it. Elmo's always the cool one. Check out Elmo. Woody and Buzz Lightyear didn't want nothing to do with our video. Crazy, shame on them. I love shooting with the D610. It's, it's really a uh, nimble camera. Light handles well and focuses and it's on point. You can take it anywhere. With the 85 millimeter 1.4, you know you want a picture, man? He didn't want me to take his picture. Oh, I've said this before in many review videos that I've done. Uh, if you're in a public place where your image you know, your image of yourself, your face, your body, your presence is where anybody else can see it in public, plain view. Your image can be taken and there's nothing anybody can technically do about it. But of course, be polite about it. If they don't want their image taken, just don't take it. responsiveness of the camera is everything the D600 should have been. Autofocusing is key in this situation. D610 is fantastic. The new Multicam 4800 is a great sensor. Very great at tracking. And although it's 39 autofocus points, it's not quite as many as the D800, which has got 51, but you really don't notice it, especially when you're tracking anything other than extreme sports. You'll be great with the D610. And the points on the tracking system are very close together, bunched just like the D600, a little too close together, but it performs much better than the D600. I'm close, okay.
city for you right there. We got a stretch Hummer here. Only in New York City they stretch everything. Hummers, Chrysler's, all kinds of stuff. You guys want a photo? You want a photo? Can I take a photo of the work? Some really nice drawings right here in New York City. Fantastic. One of my favorite features about the D610 that I almost overlooked is the same as the D800, D7100, D4. All the great leading cameras from Nikon is you hold the FN button on the bottom, which is down there, and turn the back wheel here and you'll be able to go change in the crop settings. You can go from crop mode to full frame mode, back and forth. If you want to get that tight shot, you can use the camera to crop one quick button and turning of the dial, bam, you're there. Amazing. I'll demonstrate a crop photo right now. I'm gonna go into crop mode by holding the FM button, turning the rear uh, dial to 24 by 16, and here we go. And if I took that photo in full frame, it would look like this. Get a photo of that Christmas tree. Excellent. So let's go ahead and kick off a low light test. Anything below ISO 400 is a waste of time. As you can see, ISO 400 and 800 look great. Going along to ISO 1600 and the D610 karate chops noise right in the neck. No noise whatsoever. Going along to ISO 3200 and you can see that the D610 is saying no to noise. Absolutely none. By the time we move on to ISO 6400, it's like the D610 was punched in the stomach. By the time we make it on to 12,800, the D610 has been put into a serious submission hold. And by 25,600, the D610 taps out like a sissy girl. Less than a year after the anticipated arrival of the D600, the D610 finally gets it right with no oil or dust problems. It's new Multicam 4800 Autofocusing system, 39 autofocus points, and 24 megapixel full frame sensor deliver on every avenue that made the D600 a great camera, and this one has no issues with dust or oil whatsoever, making it the perfect full frame entry level camera. And if you're thinking about upgrading from a crop sensor camera or even the D600, then this is the way to go. While well, Nikon were at it, and preparing to launch the D610, they gave us a totally brand new EX Multicam 4800 autofocusing system, which is stunningly fast and accurate. The D610 shines. In fact, the D610 is the camera the D600 should have been. The D610 is a fantastic camera, and with its bracketing capabilities and in-camera time-lapse photography, its new Multicam 4800 sensor, of course, 39 autofocus points and its great tracking capabilities and 24 megapixel full frame goodness. This camera is everything that the D600 should have been. It's good to see that it may have taken a bump in the numbers for Nikon to get it right, but they did. And of course, no dust or oil problems. Thank you, Nikon. You finally fixed it. Although instead of fixing the problem, you just released a whole new camera. Less than a year from when the other one came out, but 
nonetheless, you did a good job. The camera is fantastic. It feels good in the hands and it tracks wonderfully. If you're an aspiring photographer, enthusiast, and amateur, this is the camera to look to if you're going with full frame. It is a fantastic camera. Did I mention there's no dust or oil problems? Once again, thank you, Nikon. But I do like this camera. It's uh, amazing to hold. It feels good. It's balanced nicely. And like I said, it tracks fantastically. It couldn't get much better than that. And at 24 megapixels, win, win, win. Very good in low light, of course. And of course, I want to give a big shout out to Kevin over at Reiter Camera for loaning me this camera. They have all kinds of stuff and great deals. Check them out, ReitherCamera.com. Well guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe and to support my channel if you want to purchase any of the gear I review, like the D610 or the Nikon 85mm 1.4. Be sure to check those links on the bottom. I'm Corey of Famous Media, and happy shooting.